G'day, I'm Dr Mike. When I'm not hanging out with Jake and Olivia at All About Animals, I'm working at Vet Products Direct. It's an online shop with thousands of discounted pet care products, and you can talk to vets and vet nurses who care about your pet as much as you do. Use promotion code ANIMALS to receive 5% off your order, plus free postage anywhere in Australia. I'll see you at vetproductsdirect.com.au, and enjoy the show. This program is proudly brought to you by Vet Products Direct, Holistic Select and the Walmart Company. Welcome to today's episode of All About Animals. On today's show, I chat to the polar bear keepers at SeaWorld while Olivia learns mounted games at Pony Club. And after a visit to the new RSPCA shelter in Queensland, I chat to Nova Radio host Jared Walsh. And after the show, make sure you go to our website and enter some great competitions for your pet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So sit back and enjoy watching another exciting episode of All, All About, About Animals. Animals. Today's episode starts back at SeaWorld, where we have a look at the diet of one very big and very cool animal. I'm in the polar bear shore's kitchen where we're preparing food for the polar bears. I'm going to chat to Chi to find out more. So Chi, how do we prepare the food? Yeah right Jake, so what we're doing here is preparing the enrichment items for our polar bears this morning. So they do actually have a sweet tooth, we give them different treats throughout the day, such as dried figs, dried apricots, biscuits, watermelon and dog roll. So what we're pretty much doing this morning is putting our treats in toys so they have to physically and mentally um, try to find how to get the enrichment items out. Okay, uh, how many times do they get fed a day? So we don't actually have a set amount of times we feed the bears a day. Yeah. We try to vary it as much as we can so they don't actually predict the times that we will feed them. And um, so what are these? What are these for? So these are our toys that we give our bears. So we put treats and food inside there. Yep. They have to actively try to get their enrichment items out so that they can be reinforced with food or their treats that they love to eat. Oh, great. So let's, uh, let's get started. How do you, how do, you yep. do it? So we might just put some watermelon in the squid here, mate. Yep. Yep. Alright. So is it called a squid? Yeah, so this is called a squid and we also have jolly balls available for them as well. Yep. So we chuck a couple of carrot pieces in this if you want. In that one? Yeah, that's, that's the way, mate. Just there. And did you want to chuck that inside the jolly ball? Alright. So the bears have to try to get that out. There we go. And did you want to grab that white container, buddy? Yeah. yeah. And we'll just throw some of that dog roll inside the container. Okay. So the bears have to try to get the dog roll out of the container. So how, how do they do it? So like... depending on each bear, they kind of have their own personalities. Some of them will destroy the toys and others <laughs> will just roll it around and try to get all the dog roll out. Yeah, okay. And did you want to grab the treat bowl, Jay? And we'll put a couple of those figs inside there as well, as well as some carrots. It's hard enough getting it in there, how are they going to get it out? Well, they're very, very intelligent <laughs> creatures. Right, we'll just take it out to exhibit, buddy. Alright. So, Jake, here's a pretty good spot to put it for the bears. Okay. This is usually quite a difficult spot, just here under the log. Oh, okay. How far up do you want me to put it? Just make it a bit more difficult for them, mate. So gee, it's really exciting to be here in the polar bear enclosure, but it's really hot. How do they live here? Well, luckily for us here at SeaWorld, the polar bears are the most highly adaptive bears in the world. They can live in temperatures anywhere between negative 20 to about 30 or 40 degrees. So living here on the Gold Coast, they climatise really well to this environment. And oh, this yeah, okay. So are they native to Antarctica? Actually, they're not native to Antarctica. They're oh. actually native to the Northern Hemisphere and the Arctic. So naturally, polar bears aren't actually found here in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, okay. And uh, what about the uh, the water temperature? Is that cold or is that warm? So we do chill our waters here to about 19 degrees Celsius. 
If it's any cooler, the polar bears won't actually jump in the water because once they come out, it's a bit too cold for them. So how often do you clean the water? Here at Seawell, we do change our water every 45 minutes. We have a really good filtration system that can change all this water over. So gee, they look so cuddly. Do you give them cuddles? Well, unfortunately we can't. As much as we'd love to, these bears are actually quite dangerous and they are top predators. So we here at Seawell have always have two bear keepers on so we don't make mistakes of accidentally going in there with them. Oh, okay. So I heard that they have um, they don't have white skin. Yeah, that's right. They actually have black skin and their fur is actually hollow, translucent. And it actually just reflects the environment around them. So when you see oh. them in documentaries and things like that, they look pure white because they're always surrounded by ice. Oh, okay. So it's like a mirror effect. Yes, pretty much. So how many polar bears do you have here? Well, Jake, we've got three polar bears here at SeaWorld. We've got our brothers, Hudson and Nelson, that are turning eight years old this year. We've also got Leah, who's turning 12 years old this year. It was really interesting watching the polar bears trying to get their treats and food. Make sure you check them out next time you're at SeaWorld. Today at Pony Club, we are learning how to do mounted games. Millie and Tahara are on the state team for mounted games. Look how fast they go. I wish I could do it as well as they do. But as you can see, I've got lots of practicing to do until I'm that good. Wait for the pole to come to you rather than you stretch out. And as you're turning, he comes close to the pole, you pick up the mug. Okay, so he'll still keep turning and you can focus on picking up that mug. I coach our club team. I have been involved with the national state team for many, many years, and I've had the opportunity of um, sort of helping to coach. We have competition every weekend. We have rallies when we can fit it in. Um, and then we do an MGA, which is a very high Australian competition, uh, usually two or three times a month. This is called the flag race, and this is just an exercise um, to practice control of the horse, and of course, doing an element of putting a, a flag or a, a bamboo stick inside a cone. Um, once they get going, they can do it at a gallop. And they don't ride their own horses. The beauty of the skill is that they can have all the skills that they learnt and jump on any horse and execute this Fantastic. at a state competition. Um, I've been doing mounted games for about six years competitively and I've been around since I was two because my mum did it and stuff. So. Um, I'm a member of the junior national team since last year. We went to Albury Wodonga for the Prince Philip Cup. I like being in teams and teamwork and you meet lots of new people when you go to nationals and it's just fun overall. Well that was a great first lesson but I'll keep practicing and maybe compete at the next event. Today, we're back at Power Hills Vet Clinic chatting to Dr. Mike about dental care for our pets. So today, Dr. Mike, we've got Trudy and Denise from Power Hills Vet Clinic and they've brought in one of their patients called Penny. Thanks for bringing Penny today. What's her story and, and why is dental disease so important for dogs? Dental disease is very important for dogs. This is little Penny. She's a 14-year-old mm -hmm. Shih Tzu and she's got a lot of rotten teeth in there. Dental disease import, is important. It can cause a lot of pain for her. It would be like having a chronic toothache that you can't actually tell anybody's in there. Yeah. On top of that, you've got bacteria around those teeth. You've got pus around the gum lines. That bacteria can actually cross into the blood and once the bacteria is in the blood it can end up lodging the kidneys and the liver in the heart and causing disease in any of those organs. Wow, that's a lot of problems. Why do they have so many dental problems? A lot of it's related to diet, um, it's the types of foods that they eat and the fact that their teeth aren't brushed or they don't get enough things to actually chew on. So we need to look at long term, looking at their diets, making sure that they will actually clean the teeth as they eat it or that the people are actually brushing them or that they're actually chewing on toys. Mm. Okay, cool. Obviously Penny's in a pretty bad situation. She is at the moment. W what are your plans for today? How are you going to help? Today she's going to have a general anaesthetic. We'll actually have a look at all those teeth while she's under anaesthetic and we'll be looking at removing ones like this one here that isn't attached. Pretty nasty. Ooh. And polishing and cleaning all of the rest so that we'll bring them back to beautiful white teeth. But you can see even up here we've got infection. There's a bit of pus sitting around that gum. We'll clean all of that away. Lovely, just she's what you want. She's going to go home to a different dog tonight, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> they often go back home feeling like they're a much younger dog, so they're younger and brighter and sprightly and they really love eating again. 
Oh, that's fantastic. Obviously, this is a long-term problem. As owners, what should we be doing about dental problems in our, in our pets? The most important thing is to actually know that it's there. So regularly actually examine your dog's teeth, lift the lips, have a look what's happening, not just at the front, but all the way back. And obviously they don't like having that done, but it's got to be done so you know what's going on in that mouth. Yeah. Once you know that there's a problem, then you can start looking at including things in the diet to clean the teeth, to actually brush it. We've got a toothbrush just here. So this sort of a toothbrush goes on your finger. You can then use that to put into the mouth and actually brush the surface of the teeth. Oh, okay. There are other sorts of toys like the Kong toys that will actually clean the teeth as they chew on them. So there's a whole range of things that you can do once we know that there's a problem. So it's keeping an eye on things. Oh, that's great. So you can keep an eye on things at home. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen when you go to the vet? What sort of examinations are they going to do? They should always, whenever they're looking at the teeth, they will check all of the teeth. So they'll lift it up. They'll look at the front little... Penny doesn't want to be looked at at the moment. I think she's sick of it, isn't <laughs> yeah, she? she? Yeah, <laughs> Basically, we look at the teeth at the front and then right backwards. Because it's often the teeth at the back that are the real problem, aren't they? They are. They're the ones that are the hardest to look at. And again, you can see that Penny doesn't like it. They don't like having it done at home either. But it is something that's important to actually hold them and to do it and to give them a treat, obviously, afterwards to reward them for letting you look at the teeth. If you're getting a puppy or a kitten, and cats are important as well for the same reasons, actually train them from when they're very young to be able to actually look in the mouth, to bring back the lips and look at all the teeth. All right, great. Okay, it sounds like Penny's got a big day ahead of her, but it's yeah. some good outcomes. We'll leave you to it. Not a problem. Thank great. you very much. No Thank worries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, George, I've got this problem. What's the problem, Jake? Well, I've got Socks, who's a bull chaser, and whenever I throw the ball, um, Candy follows, um, chases, barks, and um, tries and nips it. So can you help? Okay, let's have a look. Let's have All a look right. at what's going on for you. You ready? You ready? Go. Go. So she's clearly more stimulated by him going into prey drive than she is about chasing the ball. What we want to do is um, control her before we throw the ball. So let's see how we go. I'm just give us the ball here. It's a bit slobby, but it's okay. So. <laughs> Leave, ah, ah, leave. So we want to control her, get her calm. Yep. So George, why is she doing this? She's a bit of a control freak. Oh, okay. She, so she doesn't like the fact he's excited and stimulated and going into prey drive. Okay. Uh, so she wants to control him, maybe stop the behavior. Not exactly sure exactly what's going on for her, but we have to get her calm and to leave him alone so he can enjoy playing with his ball. Okay. Leave. Uh, uh Leave. We'll hold her and I'll throw the ball. Socks. Socks. Fetch. Good boy. So I want to teach her to be able to control her uh, excitement or her instincts, her drives. Uh, uh Leave. Good girl. Good. You throw it? Yep. Leave. Because I found that socks is a bull chaser and candy's a socks chaser, so <laughs> they keep themselves amused at the park. Okay. But so, pitch, leave. Huh. So I might pay you to start doing it like this for a while. Okay. You control her, and this way he gets to enjoy himself, and she gets to be able to control her mind. Okay. Leave. Leave. Good girl. Uh, uh, uh. Jack, I want you to practice for the next few weeks having her on a lead when mm -hmm. you play with socks. Get her calm, maybe even sitting. Sit. Make sure she's calm mm -hmm. and throw the ball. So I said a word like leave. Right, so if you do this for a couple, few more weeks, yeah. um, she'll get the idea here that she's to leave him alone and he gets to play. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very enjoyable for him at the moment. So it'll sink, it'll sink in eventually. Yeah, you hold it and you try it a few oh. times. Leave. Leave. That's nice. Good work, Jake. Uh, uh, uh. Leave. 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 Try George's tips for yourself. Some dogs will naturally challenge an obsessive or excited dog. So, if necessary, keep them on a leash. 
tie them up or put them away until they learn manners. And remember, you should initiate ball throwing, not your dog. And refuse to throw a ball until your dog is calm. Please visit sitdropstay.com.au for more information. The Walmart Company runs an annual fashion design competition for high school students around Australia to use Australian wool. Some of the girls from Our Lady of Sacred Heart in Adelaide chatted to us about their experience. So Ms Beasley, how did the school get involved with Wool for School? We were contacted by an email and given the opportunity for the girls to be involved and I thought it would be a really great idea. Yeah, alright. And how do you think it benefits the students? It gives the girls an opportunity to work in a more commercial sense so they use the design process as though they'd actually be working in industry. Alright, so do you want to go chat to some students? Yeah, let's go. Alright. I had to design a garment that best reflected my modern Australian theme. I chose a theme of black, white and grey and named my theme The Simplicity of Shades. I decided to design for a female client and my garment was for summer. It was a compulsory task given from our teacher. Um, it was lots of fun though and I learnt lots about all the different wool types, how to design as I had never done anything like that before and it also come under the curriculum for the Year 10 design for that semester. Our designs will be entered into the Wool for School competition and a winner will be selected. They will win two and a half grand and their um, design will be featured in Girlfriend magazine and it will be made and they will also be able to meet a famous Australian designer, Jonathan Ward. I enjoyed having the opportunity to create my own designs and also seeing what the other girls designed as well. It was a lot of fun. We had eight weeks to work in our project and that was um, all class time and I know some girls worked on it at home as well. For more information go to wolfersschool.com Hey guys, I've got another joke for you. Alright, right, tell Phil. us. Why do gorillas have big nostrils? Uh, Don't know. Because they have a lot of boogers. Nope. Because nope. they got big fingers. <laughs> I don't get it. Because they got big fingers jokes. to pick their boogers. Now every episode, we like to try and find people who go that extra mile by helping some very special animals. Today, we visit the new RSPCA shelter in Wakehall, Queensland, which has been caring for all creatures, great and small, for 150 years. These centres are often staffed by volunteers, all working really hard to increase the opportunities and improve the quality of life for each of the animals in their care. So what kind of animals come to the shelter? We see lots of different animals. We see a lot of um, wildlife, but we see primarily domestic animals. So you catch your dogs, you catch your kittens, um, but also pocket pets, so your guinea pigs, your rats, your mice, um, but also livestock like goats and pigs and horses, cattle. We can see a variety of animals. So really a bit of everything, yeah. A bit of everything. You've got to be hands-on with <laughs> yeah. all sorts of animals here. So how can the public help? Well, the public can help primarily by adopting animals from us and obviously donating um, either money or their time because we've got lots of volunteers and without their help we wouldn't be able to do our job. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd love to help out by giving you this holistic select dog and cat food to help with your animals. Thank you very much. No worries. Quite often, the animals at the RSPCA get adopted by members of the public. So we caught up with Minnie to hear the special story about her adopted dog, Sophie. Tell our Sophie's story. Well, Sophie came to us, um, the RSPCA, back in 2009. That was our largest puppy factory seize that we ever did. We seized over 400 dogs. Oh, wow. Um, so she was part of that, and just through neglect, we had to remove her eyes. We couldn't save them, mm. so she was actually blind, and she was producing no water tear ducts at all. And then um, I fostered her. And then when we won the court case, um, I eventually adopted her. Aww, that's, oh, that's really upsetting, but it's good that, um, that you saved Sophie. Yeah. It is good, and she deserves um, a better life to what she came from. Definitely. Now, the more I hear about these puppy farms, the anger I get. Urgh. So please, if you're thinking about buying a pet, don't buy them online or from a pet shop, but consider adopting one from the RSPCA or other animal shelters. Please. So for your chance to win a year's supply of holistic slate pet food, go to allaboutanimals.tv and enter the competition. Viewer Pets is brought to you by Para Hills Vet Clinic. Yes, it's that time again, viewers pets. I get lots and lots of great photos of your pets emailed in and I love looking through them all. I've picked out a few to share with you, so let's take a look. 
first up, we've got photos from 10-year-old Brooke, who has a pet dog called Buddy. Brooke got Buddy when she was a baby, so they both turned 10 this year. Buddy loves to play soccer with any ball he can find. He's a very good guard dog to Brooke's chickens and lambs and treats them like his babies. Our next pet has been sent to by Caitlin, who has a horse called Viva. Viva is an 11-year-old Crabbit Arabian. Her favourite food is chocolate and you can't eat anything without her wanting some too. Caitlin and Viva do lots of showing, trail rides and jumping. Viva is a great friend to Caitlin and always neighs when her name is called. Finally, we have photos from Bonnie, who is 11 from Brinkworth in South Australia. Bonnie's dog is called Bella and she is a red healer. She is four years old and can run very fast. Bonnie loves to be around people and is very clever. She even knows how to sit, stay and shake hands. So to have your pet on our show, just email info at allaboutanimals.tv with three photos of you and your pet, five things about your pet and your name, age, suburb and state. And don't forget to enter our awesome competitions at allaboutanimals.tv. Hi, Jared. Hello, Olivia. Thank you very much for coming to uh, visit me and my lovely dog, who's going a little bit silly at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Well, I heard that you really, really love her, so I thought I might come and find out a bit more about her. Yeah, well, I do love her, and I can safely say she is my best friend in the whole world. <laughs> her name is Kimba. Now, I'm not sure if you were alive, because I'm quite old now. Um, when a TV show was on, and it was called Kimber the White Lion. So we saw this TV show, me and my wife, and we thought this is a perfect name for her because she's very white. <laughs> yeah, she is. And what breed is she? Uh, she's a golden retriever. And if you've seen golden retrievers before, and I'm sure you have, they're usually gold. So yeah. she's a strange looking one, which, yeah. which makes her stand out all the time. So how old is she? She is just over a year, so she's still a puppy and yeah. getting up to no good. And thankfully, the, the camera's here because behind the camera, there's lots of damage in our garden, <laughs> thanks to Kimba. And what's her personality like? She's very friendly. And a lot of people say about golden retrievers, if someone was to come to our house that wasn't supposed to, instead of barking and getting them scared, she would invite them in and show them where everything is. So she's probably a little bit too friendly. <laughs> And has she ever come into work with you? Yes, I took her into work the second day that we had her, but I had to put newspaper all through my radio studio just in case there was an accident, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So working in radio, have you ever said anything that you wish you could take back straight away? Most days, yes, but two things stand out for me. Firstly, uh, I was asked a question a few weeks ago by my wife on the radio if I love Kimba more than I love her. <laughs> And I said, yes, and well, yeah, we're, we're slowly patching things up together, my <laughs> wife and I. But uh, no, the good thing about working where I work is that we have a lot of trust and uh, we can say a lot of things. I'm sometimes silly, but I'm not silly enough to lose my job, but close to it, yes. Yeah. And is it hard keeping up a conversation when you're in the studio by yourself? Sometimes, but I'm usually told at work that I'm quite annoying because I usually go out of the studio because I'm in there by myself and talk to everybody else so they don't get their work done. So <laughs> sometimes I'm glad when my boss isn't there because I just go and talk to everyone. But yeah, it gets lonely sometimes and I just talk to myself then, <laughs> so I look strange. So Jared, how'd you get started in radio? Uh, it's a long story, but I'll keep it as short as possible, and I'm not lying here, this is the truth. I was driving one of the big station cars we had at Nova, and imagine it has a big mast on it, and I left it up and crashed into power lines, and the next day my boss has said to me, um, we don't trust you driving the cars, so you can go on the radio, and that's, that's it. So, I don't recommend anyone does that at home, though, don't do that at home, don't. So when can we listen to you on Nova? I'm on from 9 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon, so when people are just getting to work or on their lunch break, they can turn on Nova and they'll probably get sick of hearing my voice all the time. <laughs> well, Kim is very cute and good luck with Nova. Oh, thank you very much, Olivia, for coming over to my house and seeing Kimber and I wish I cleaned up the place, but That's I'm right. really grateful that I've been uh, able to be a part of your show and uh, show my best friend and hopefully my wife isn't watching because I just said Kimber's my best friend, so I'll get in trouble again. <laughs> Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for you to visit our website and enter some great competitions for your pet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So, see, see you next time.
lovers from around the globe are wrapping themselves into the record books. The Walmart Company presents the world's longest social scarf. Join us at raptinmarino.com.